gateway to a great city. A peaceful city, shining in the sun. Its waters flash and sparkle like hard glass. But behind the quiet facade is the stir of power and the turbulence of motion. This is a seaport, a throbbing artery through which flows the lifeblood of the nation. Here, ships from the seven seas and the four corners of the earth discharge their silks and steel. Here men labor and sweat to feed the hunger of the city. Cold for the furnace, cold for the foundry, cold for the active muscle of the city, the powerhouse. Machinery, steel and concrete for the growing spires of the city skyline. These are the men who bring life to the city. These are the men who turn the ships around. Australia's wealth, flowing through the port. Flour for the bread of Europe, flour for the bread of Asia. Here you have to be strong and nimble. This is a dangerous occupation. 12,000 men are injured every year, one half of the total labor force. This is a young man's job, yet old men are at work here. 1,500 Federation members are over the age of 60. These are the veterans of the waterfront. These men have labored here for 30, 40, and some as long as 50 years.
lives molded on the waterfront, lifting, lumping and heaving for the needs of the city. Keep on walking, old man. Leave your job, and where will you walk to? Where will you go? What awaits you in the city you have served so long and so well? infested tenement rooms to rot out your last days? Charity on a sick bed? Aimless wandering, not knowing where your next decent meal is coming from. What awaits you, old man, but misery. The veterans work on while they have the strength in preference to a life of poverty. Shipping companies have been paying high dividends. In one year alone, five companies made 40 million pounds profit. Dividends kept high by sweat and ill health. In 1945, the government medical officer, Dr. McQueen, investigated the health of the wharfies. This is what he found. Blood pressure. Blood pressure, when normal, is equivalent to 140 millimeters. A large proportion of the men in the industry were over 200 millimeters. In any other industry, these men would be candidates for the industrial scrap heat. I can say without hesitation that there is no other industry that can produce the number of physical derelicts that I have encountered on the waterfront. This is the price of profit. Diseases of the lung are abundant. Working in confined spaces, handling dangerous and dusty cargoes, long hours, inadequate diet, have all contributed to the high incidence of these diseases. Men who in the main have been ruined physically by the anxiety of the depression years. The endless search for the infrequent job had taken its devastating toll. In the port of Sydney, a recent X-ray survey revealed 40 positive cases of tuberculosis. Hundreds of cases of other lung diseases were also detected. This is the price of profit. Hernia, a condition caused by lifting excessive weight. These men who were compelled to work at a feverish rate have paid a shocking price in premature old age and physical calamity. This is the price of profit. <laughs> days before the war, men worked 24 hours straight, three days in one, and you kept the hook moving, throwing up lead at 100 tons per hour, sugar at 80 tons an hour, loading wool at 1,800 bales a shift. This is how the millions were made. This is how the profits were born.
1 a.m. The city sleeps, but the wolves are awake, and still the lifeblood of the city pulses on through the waterfront. In this grimly remembered era, known as the Bull Days, systematic sweating by the ship owners took heavy toll of the waterside workers. The depression years, the 13-mile waterfront, men tramping the hungry miles day after day, searching for jobs, desperate for work. You had to be tough to survive the Bull Days. Every sunrise saw another nail in your coffin. Waterside Workers Federation takes action. All over the waterfront, job meetings are held. These older men must not be thrown on the industrial scrap heap. They must be allowed to enjoy the fruits of their labor. A delegation to Canberra. From the rank and file they come to take their demands to the federal government. leaders Tom Nelson, Jim Healy, Dutchie Young and others had the deputation to inform parliamentarians of the Federation's objectives. The proposals are to be placed before the Minister for Labour.
fund to finance the payment of pensions to men who wish to retire on reaching the age of 65. The fund to be financed from a levy on employers, either by cargo handled or hours worked. A worker is eligible for an eight pound per week pension after 20 years in the industry and on reaching the age of 65. We, the veterans of the Waterside Workers' Federation, resolve to carry on the fight until the demands for a pension are met. The rank and file of the Waterside Workers' Federation moves into action. Men who work the ships from White Bay to Woolloomooloo are massed here to endorse the delegation's report. The campaign gains momentum. Sydney's 6,000 wharfies are with the veterans to a man. Old forts, 20,000 strong, are with the veterans. The right to industrial pensions is the right of every working man. The young men of today are the veterans of tomorrow. These veterans do not ask for grudging charity, nor do they want the grinding toil of the war. They only ask for their just right, a peaceful place in the sun. Surely it is the nation's responsibility to see that these men spend their remaining years with decency and dignity. They have served the community long and well. The nation owes them a debt. It is for you to see that that debt is paid. <laughs>